All right, so we're going to be actually finishing the Cindy and Jim story in this uh, final clip. It's going to get a little bit interesting. In an effort to get Cindy's attention, Jim decides to climb the roof of Cindy's house, oh god, in the middle of the night. On the way, he stumbles and falls. He gets back up again and makes it to the top. Once there, he calls Cindy to let her know that he is above her window, okay? When Cindy opens her window, Jim tosses her a bouquet of flowers with an upward speed of 15 meters per second. Find the bouquet's displacement and velocity after 4 seconds. Okay, so the story might get a little bit weird too, so you might have to think about this a little bit. Okay, so let's just say Jim is on top of this thing. Cindy is down below. So we'll just draw Cindy over here. And then... Jim over here tosses tosses a bouquet of flowers upward. Okay, so we have an upward velocity, upward initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Uh, we know when he tosses it, gravity is going to be acting on it. So this is going to be an acceleration of gravity of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we want to know what the displacement and velocity is after four seconds. So after four seconds, how fast is it going? And what is its displacement? Okay. So mm, let's look for the uh, let's look for the displace or no, let's look for the final velocity first. So let's look at what we have in our formula sheet. And we see that this formula here has all four of these of what we need. So we're going to do acceleration is equal to V final minus V initial over T. And kind of plug things in. Negative 9.8 is equal to V final minus V initial, which is 15, divided by T, which is 4 seconds. Do a little bit of math. And we see that the speed is going to be equal to negative 24.2 meters per second. I shouldn't say speed, I say velocity. Negative 24.2 meters per second. So we know after four seconds, even though you tossed it up, it is on its downward path. We don't know exactly where yet, but we know it's going down after four seconds. All right, let's find displacement. Again, we're going to look at our formula sheet, see what we have. And we're going to notice that this formula here has everything that we need. So displacement the y equals v initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Displacement the y is equal to 15 times t 4 plus one half negative 9.8 4 squared. Do a little bit of algebra. And then we find that the answer is negative 18.4 meters. Okay, so let me just explain a little bit of what this means. This negative 18.4 meters means this is where it started and it's 18.4 meters below where it started. So at this point here, it's negative 18.4 meters and it's going 24.2 meters per second in the downward direction. So what is the maximum height reached distance from the point it was thrown? Uh, so what we're looking for in this instance is we're looking for the highest point that it achieved. So right there. So let's find everything we know. So when we know that when it was thrown, it has an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. We know again gravity is going to be taking its course, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's kind of all we know up until that point. We're looking for what the distance is. So again, we're looking for the displacement. But what we should also know is at the top of its trajectory, the velocity is zero. So where it starts here, I'm gonna say we're looking for this, what it is right there. So we're gonna see the final velocity is equal to zero. Now again, we're gonna be looking at our formula sheet and we see that this one here is what we need to solve for this. So Vfy squared is equal to V initial y squared plus 
a change in y and again we know at the top it's 0 15 squared plus 2 negative 9.8 change in y do a little bit of math maybe I'll, I'll show the math So what this is saying is, from where it was thrown, it goes up 11.48 meters until it starts to go back down. What is the bouquet's acceleration when it is at its maximum height? So as we learned, you know, at the very top, the velocity is zero. However, the acceleration is always going to be nine point. Whenever it's just in the air and we're on Earth, it's going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The gravity is always trying to pull it down with an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, but what happens? Cindy catches the bouquet of flowers and is overwhelmed by Jim's gesture. Jim is feeling good about going to the winter dance with Cindy. Ooh, interesting. All right, let's see what happens next. Cindy and Jim decide to go out for a little walk onto the George Washington Bridge. They both laugh and talk until they stumble upon two glowing rocks. Oh, weird. Jim picks up the blue glowing rock and drops it over the bridge. It takes three seconds to reach the river below. Cindy takes the red glowing rock and throws it vertically. It takes this rock two seconds to hit the water, so she must have thrown it down if it's going to take less time. With what velocity was the red glowing rock thrown? So this is a pretty complex problem. You want to kind of draw out both the scenarios. So first, what we're looking for with Cindy. So let me just draw Cindy here. So they are, she is on this bridge. She throws this rock and then it takes two seconds to hit the water. Let's see everything we know with Cindy. So we know, what, well, what we're looking for is the initial velocity. We don't know what she, how fast she threw the rock and that's what we're looking for. We know the rock takes two seconds to hit the water. We know when the rock is thrown, gravity is gonna be pulling it down with an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. However, this is all we know. And we only have two pieces of information so we can't do anything. However, let's look at the other situation with Jim. So Jim is on this bridge as well. He throws this, oh no, he doesn't throw this rock. He drops the rock. He drops it. So what that means is the initial velocity is zero meters per second. This rock is going to take three seconds to fall down. And we know that gravity is going to be pulling it down with acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So what we want to do is we want to find this here, but we only have two pieces of information. So in this case, what we want to do is we have three pieces of information here. So what can we find out in this scenario that's going to help us with this? And what we should know is what the, what's the same for both of these is the displacement of how high they are. So if we can find this displacement, it'll give us more information here, which will help us to find this initial velocity. All right, so let's solve for this. Uh, displacement in the Y is equal, oh, sorry. We're gonna look which one has all three of these, and we see this formula right here. V initial t plus one half a y t squared. Displacement of the y is going to be equal to zero plus one half negative nine point eight three squared. Displacement of the y is going to be equal to negative forty four point one meters. And now that we know that here. This will help us to find uh, the initial velocity that Cindy threw with. Okay, so displacement of the y, v initial y t plus one half a y t squared, negative 44.1 is equal to the initial velocity, which we're looking for, times the time two plus one half negative 9.8 
2 squared. All right, let's do some math here. And we find that she throws it down with a speed of 12.25 meters per second. Um, but what's really interesting is when they threw it, as soon as the red rock hits the water, a red and blue dragon appears from the river and makes Cindy and Jim some cool lemonade. Very strange. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what's happening now. Example number 31. Meanwhile, an owl uh, flies upwards right above Jim, who is unconscious. Oh, weird. When the bird, traveling with a velocity of 5 meters per second, is 10 meters away from Jim, it releases a small branch that it is carrying. The branch lands right next to Jim. How fast will the branch traveling right before? How fast will the branch be traveling right before it hits the ground? Okay, very weird. What's happening in the story? But let's look at the physics. So what's happening is this bird is flying. It has this branch, and when it's ten meters above Jim, it releases this branch. Okay, and we want to know how fast this branch is going to be hitting the ground. What's interesting is, even though the bird is, it releases this branch, so you think, oh, the branch is going to be moving zero meters per second when it's released. However, since it's moving upwards, what that means is, since it's moving upward, it's, the branch is going to be going up first with the speed of however fast the bird was going which is five meters per second so it's going to be moving upwards like this and you can even try this with your pen like if you move your hand and you drop it it's first going to go up and then down it's not immediately going to start going down and you can kind of just try that out on your own so this branch even though it just released it's going to be moving with the same velocity of the bird which is five meters per second so its initial velocity is 5 meters per second. Its displacement, even though it's arc like this, it's gonna, it starts from this point right here and ends at that point right there. So its displacement in the Y is negative 10 meters. Remember, displacement is from where it starts to where it ends. So that's where it started and this is where it's ending. Acceleration, as we know, is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared and we are looking for the final velocity. We're looking for how fast it's gonna hit. So again, we're gonna look at our formula sheet and we're gonna see all four of these is with this formula right here. So VFY squared is equal to V initial Y squared plus two A change in Y. Final velocity is what we're looking for. Initial velocity, which is five squared plus two negative 9.8, change in y, negative 10. All right, let's do some math. That this is going to be 14.87 meters per second. Uh, since it just asks well, how fast, we don't have to include the negative. Okay, we don't have to include the negative because it's just asking for the speed. All right. What is the max height that the branch reaches while in the air? So again, this max height, what this means is how high does it go? That's the maximum height right there. So let's see everything we know. So we know when this branch is released, it has an initial velocity of five meters per second. Gravity is pulling it down, acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And again, at this highest point right here, the final velocity is gonna be zero. And what we're looking for is the displacement. We're looking for that height. So now let's look at this. Displacement in the y equals v initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Displacement in the y is equal to five. Oh wait, oh sorry. We can't use this formula. 
this is why you always look at the formula sheet. Okay, so which one has all four of these? And we see it's that it's this one right here. We don't have time. So we can use V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A change in Y. And what we get is 0 is equal to 5 squared plus 2A negative 9.8 change in Y. And y is equal to... Dun, dun, dun. Divided by 19.8. One point. Oh, what is the maximum height that the branch reaches while in the air? So the displacement of the y is equal to 1.28 meters. However, so this is 1.28 meters. However, it's looking for what is the max height that they reach while in the air. The maximum height is going to be from the ground so from here all the way to over here so we know this part is 10 meters and this part is 1.28 meters so the max height will be equal to 10 plus 1.28 which is 11.28 meters okay and but what happens to Jim Jim wakes up from the noise of the branch, oh, weird, okay, and finds himself lying on the ground next to Cindy's house. What? He notices that his bouquet of flowers is scattered all around him. Okay, if you're confused, you might want to look at the, uh, not the last example, but the example before that. All right, the conclusion of the story. Harry and Cindy decide to go to the winter dance together and they have a wonderful time. Sadly, Jim could not attend the dance because he hurt his back and his head while falling off the roof of Cindy's house. Jim spent several days in the hospital recovering. Okay, kind of a sad story. All right, even though that's the end of Jim and Cindy, we're gonna be doing a few more problems to uh, do some, uh, figure some more problems out. To determine the height, of a building, Jessica throws a ball straight up. She sees that the ball reaches the top of the building after 0.5 seconds. The ball continues traveling upwards before falling back down again. As it falls, it reaches the top of the building the second time after a total lapse time of 4.1 seconds. How high is the building? All right, so let's draw this out. So this one's pretty difficult again. Jessica throws this ball, goes up, like this and she's trying to find what the height of this building is next to this ball so we're looking for what this displacement is what we know sorry what we know is that when it reaches the height of the building the first time I'm gonna call it T1 it is 0.5 seconds. And then when it reaches the height of the building again, the second time, I'll call it T2, it is equal to 4.1 seconds. And we wanna know how high this building is. So this is kind of confusing. Uh, there's a few ways that we can do this. What I would like to do first is just kind of dissect um, dissect the whole everything with time so we know it takes 0.5 seconds to go from here to here 0.5 seconds and then we know it's going to take from here to here it's going to take maybe i'll do this with a different color 0.5 seconds it's going to take a 4.1 minus 0.5 which is going to be equal to 3.6 seconds and then what we should also know, sorry, is that from here to here, however long it takes to go up, it's gonna take the same amount to go down. It takes another 0.5 seconds. So we know the whole time it takes to get from here all the way back down to here, I'm gonna call this the total time. That's gonna be equal to 0.5 plus 3.6 plus 0.5. So it's going to be equal to 4.6 seconds. Okay. That being said, 
now that we know the total time for this whole thing, we have some things. We also know while it's going through this whole process here, it experiences acceleration by gravity of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We also know that the displacement of the ball, it starts here and ends up here at the same spot. So the displacement of the ball is going to be zero. That being said, what we can do is we can find, we have three pieces of information now. So we can find some something that could be useful. And something that could be useful is how fast this ball was thrown. We don't know how fast this ball was thrown. So let's look at something that could give us the initial velocity. And when we look at this, we see that this equation here can help us with that. So displacement in the y equals v initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Zero is equal to v initial y t, which is 4.6 plus one half negative 9.8 t squared. All right, let's simplify this a bit. I'm gonna put this on the other side. Negative V initial 4.6 is equal to negative 4.9 T squared. Oops, uh, sorry. Not T, T is equal to 4.6. So this is 4.6 squared. Uh, we could get rid of one of the 4.6. And then we see, can see that V initial is going to be equal to 4.9 times 4.6, 22.54 meters per second. So we have another piece of information here. And this is what you want to do. You want to try to get as much information as you can when you're having a hard time solving a problem. So 22.54 meters per second. Now what we want to do is we want to look at this portion here. Since we want to look at the top of this building, we want to look at everything from when it was thrown to the top of this building. So we know it was thrown with an initial velocity of 22.54 meters per second. We know gravity was pulling it down the whole time with an acceleration negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we know when it got to the top of the building, it took 0.5 seconds and we want to know for it to go from here to here in 0.5 seconds how tall was it so we're looking for the displacement again we're going to use the formula displacement is equal to v initial y t plus one half a y t squared and we get displacement is equal to 22.54 times 0 0.5 plus 1 half negative 9.8.5 squared. Ten point zero five meters. All right. Thank you guys.